Hello. Um, my name is Niklas, online known as Nightcrabbit as well. And yeah, I've been working with MediaWiki for a while, and probably best known for my website, translatewiki.net. So if you are developing MediaWiki extensions or the open source software, this is the place where you can get translations for those. I also work for the Wikimedia Foundation in the language team, building translation tools. Uh, but this talk is not about translation, it's about my side projects um, related to creating a wiki farm, most of my experiences and gotchas related to deploying MediaWiki and importing existing content to it. And uh, don't read the talk as critic, even though I mentioned issues that were not working so well. And yeah, just speaking for myself, not of any of the organizations mentioned in this talk. Okay, so about the wiki farm, it contains three wikis right now. All of them are somehow related to words, language data. Most of them are kind of simple, simple media wiki, wikis, as you know. And one of them is also using Wikibase um, with the idea that the organization which had collected place names in Finland, lots of them, they have this authoritative data, but they also want to enable users to kind of curate on top of it while keeping the distinction what's like authoritative. And in that wiki, I just using similar media wiki for implementing some simple search queries. And this wiki is a part of the Language Bank of Finland, which is coordinated by Finclarin, and lots and lots of organizations, multiple stakeholders are involved. So my point here really is that there's no single person I can go to which will make decisions or something. It's kind of have to collaborate with all of these different organizations and their respective people. Um, so, when I was starting to create this wiki form, I was discussing with the uh, CSC from the previous slide that if they are going to take over most of the maintenance, if the, somehow the server automation should be done and we agreed to use Ansible. And from my Wikimedia work, I've been using Puppet, but Ansible was new to me. So I spent quite a lot of time learning it, but in the end I think it was worth it. It was very useful so that I could create my development environment and testing environment and a couple of others, which I will mention soon. Um, my main issues here was like, they wanted to use CentOS 7, which, which is stable, but has some old software, so I had to do some uh, exploration when things were breaking, git commands, even my Oregano tool, which I use for deploying MediaWiki, and stuff like installing PHP 7 outside the regular packages. And uh, yeah, I like it really much, so I even forked it, the set of scripts, so that I can use it for the wiki deployments, and uh, uh, they were using other distributions, so I was kind of changing them to work on that distribution. And uh, in Puppet, it seems pretty clear that it's easy to support multiple distributions. In Ansible, it seems a little bit less clear. Some of the packages pre-made by others I was using were like, well, you can maybe supply the list of packages, but that's not, not really the way I want to do it. Um, yeah, there was talk about Mesa earlier. I have to admit I haven't yet looked into it, but I could fit into my use case, um, I will. And maybe I don't need to worry about the distribution issue in the future if we have glorious future with containers or something. And yeah, I had quite a few issues with something MediaWiki. Uh, one of them is related to the fact that in the latest version they added this step that every time you run the 
database update script. Same thing with Wiki wants to optimize the tables, um, which is fine, except that if you have like millions of entries over three wikis, it will take a while. And I don't want to do it every time I deploy a new version of the code. So they had this nice thing that you can just give this command line parameter to skip that, except in latest media wiki, they added another feature which uh, throws warnings and doesn't run the script if there's a non command line parameter. So it's kind of stuck there, so I had to fork semantic media wiki to skip the optimization step and stuff. Um, but just, I think last week, this feature that extensions can modify the parameters of the maintenance scripts was added to MediaWiki core, so that's now fixed, yay. And um, also, in the recent thing, MediaWiki is this SMW.json, which kind of keeps track that the database updates are in sync with the code deployed. It's a nice idea, except that when running in you know, a wiki form, it didn't take account that different wikis uh, have different databases, so it was just creating one file and assuming it belongs to that wiki, even though multiple wikis are using the same configuration. And I uh, also had to do some debugging because it silently failed to create this file, assuming that the script that runs the update script has write permission to the code location. Um, but as far as I know, those issues have been fixed now. But yeah, I also had this issue with translatewiki.net that <laughs> uh, exactly the same issue that was failing to create the file because of the permission and there was another bug that, uh, well, if, if the database is not in sync, uh, Semantic Media Week kind of intercepts Media Week and throws this white page with error text saying you need to run database scripts, which is not so nice for production wiki. But in addition, there was a bug that this text was not displaying. So I wasn't getting white pages, no errors anywhere in the logs. That took a while, in, while to investigate. Uh, oh no. And, um, Luckily, this was easy way to revert back to the previous version while I was debugging. Um, okay, that was about deployments. I have some notes about doing imports. Um, hoping that bar will go away. So for Semantic Video Wiki, I have kind of this process over the years where I start looking at the data, I start creating this templates, properties on the wiki, and writing conference script from whatever format. And uh, yeah, I had doc files manually formatted. So as you can imagine, uh, most of the time we're spending figuring out how to get that nicely in structure format. And uh, once I was kind of ready, I put this everything in Git, and uh, all the templates, all the items I'm going to create, there's one file per page in the file system. And when I want to deploy the production, I just deploy this extension, run a script that imports all of those pages in the wiki. And uh, some of the issues I encountered doing this was that some of the titles could not be accessed, and uh, the reason was that the Unicode normalization was different what MediaWiki is using. And if you edit through browser, it's fine because it does the normalization, but if you use the PHP functions, it doesn't do that. So my script will now check that it's normalized properly and if the title is invalid, it will tell you instead of failing silently and you're wondering where is the data. Um, for the Name Archive Wiki, which was the one using Wikibase and Simon Wiki Wiki. Um, this was so far my biggest project. Um, yeah, so we were meeting and discussing and, well, okay, let's get started. I get a sample CSV file. 
I don't know, some thousands of rows with 20 columns. And uh, there was actually another person working with me just to figure out how to get from these values to uh, what kind of items we want to have in the wiki base and what kind of properties. We took quite a few from Wikidata, copied into our wiki. And um, yeah, it was going nicely until <laughs> the real data comes in. It was about one gigabyte CSV file with two million rows. So I had to rewrite the script that does the parsing to do it parse line by line. And uh, um, there were dependencies between the rows, like some of them had to be merged. So a little bit of handwork there. And yeah, here again, the data had lots of issues. So it originally comes from like, uh, people were like having these small paper, note, paper notes where they wrote down the place name, where it is, coordinates, they had mapped with them and what the person has said about the name. And that was digitized on another company and when it came back, there were lots and lots of mistakes, including things like some of the rows missing a column in the middle, so all the data was in the wrong place, or just nonsensical values in some of the places, and just quite a bit of effort to go back and forth with the client to get this fixed, and in the end, have to implement some <coughs> ugly hacks in the code. If row is this, then do these corrections. And uh, that was just like parsing the data into some structured format, like JSON. But then I also had to get it inside the wiki base and in the wiki. And uh, yeah, that was very easy. Just Google some docs and take the examples and add up the things. Yeah, right, there are no such docs. So kind of a bit of learning there. Uh, the wiki base code is quite different from MIDI wiki code. Kind of like lots of classes with similar names and trying to figure it out. Not so fun. And uh, once I got something working, I quickly realized that uh, with the speed of some pages per second and at least something like six to seven million pages, it's going to take a while. So, and if even if it could. If I could wait, it would leak memory, like most of media recommender scripts do. So I had to do some more coding to make it split the chunks into smaller pieces, uh, keeping in mind that in Wikibase, I need to import the properties before the items using those properties, and the properties match reference items, so those items need to be first and uh, still at least on my development server when I added parallel scripts, I was running out of memory because they were still using quite a lot of it. And by this time, of course, <laughs> uh, the client has decided that we have this event, let's launch the website, or at least something nice to show them by the time. So what would I do? Um, yeah, go into the cloud, of course more hardware at the problem. Um, this was my first experience using cloud systems, so quite a few surprises there. One of the first ones, like, I had the script running for a day, and then I was looking. This was going like 300 pages per second, now it's back to 10. Where is the bottleneck? What happened? Uh, in the end, I realized that they are like IOPS, disk operation quotas, and I had used all, all the reserves, so it was now getting like 10 per second or something, so I had to reserve some of those to keep the speed up. Um, I also tried to save money, like shutting the database after the import was done and I was not using it, but um, something like a week after I went to have a look and it's running, so I was like, what has happened? Until I realized that, okay, there's a maintenance window, which is fine, but I would expect that if the server was shut down, it might be started, but then it would start down again, no. And just very unclear how much it would cost in the end. 
Um, not the probe in the end, but still. Um, so it did bug. I had some full for servers in the cloud. The full import was done something like 24 hours. Don't remember the exact time, but it was well, fast enough to actually do some iterative work on the stuff, which I had to do because I noticed errors here and there, and then I had to start again. And once I started doing that, I started getting weird error messages. Page already exists, which shouldn't, and so on. So what I had done, I was only, I had only truncated the database tables, but uh, I suppose parser cache or something still had information which MediaWiki was using. So in the end, I had, I had script which does this kind of reset, actually starts memcast and PHP so that all would be clear for new run. And yeah, the deadline was very close. So in the end, what I did was that in the production server, make a reverse proxy to the one in the cloud, which was nice because then I had more power there. It could easily handle all the initial load coming in. And yeah, sometimes we keep discussing things like how much RAM or disk space we need, but it would have been cheaper if we just had added that in the first place, even though it is kind of government organizations are not the most cost effective, but still. Um, and well, not all of the issues got fixed in the one that was imported. What we actually did initially was that we had a big note on the page that these IDs are not yet stable because we were preparing for the case that we need to import from scratch, which is the only thing that my scripts can do. But we had to remove that at some point. So now we are kind of stuck because there are lots of updates being done to original material and doing them by hand also on the wiki is not feasible. So we have been looking into tools like OpenRefine, which has wiki data support, but the wiki based support, like the generic version, is not yet really there. So if you have any suggestions, kind of how to use tools to update data and wiki base that can like check what's already in there and what needs updating, that would be very useful. And um, yeah, so in that wiki, I kind of copied some of the wiki data items. Well, first of all, each of the kind of one place name was one item, and I create a corresponding normal media wiki page, which just uses a template that pulls in the data from uh, the wiki page and formats it nicely, and also sets some of those in the semi wiki media wiki properties, with the result that the property pages would time out. I suppose if you have like lots of values, but most of them are the same, it has to scan lots of rows to find the different values um, that was optimized, which is nice. And then if you now edit this template that's used on over two million pages, um, it didn't really work because the job had so many parameters, like the pages it had to update, that it didn't fit in the database job queue table. So I had to make that column much larger and also tweak the settings that how many pieces it will split that work. And uh, I was happy to see that, again, like just this or last week, <laughs> that column was increased in MediaWiki core. Um, yeah, and of course it would still take time to update all those two million pages, but at least it would not fail and block other jobs. Um, one open issue is that uh, client wants that you can search the place names by having wildcards anywhere. And given there are like millions of those, it will take a while because there's no index in MariaDB as far as I know that could speed that up. I've heard that my PostgreSQL has like these ngram indexes, which maybe could help. And uh, in one of the other wikis, the first one I was working with, the term bank, 
Um, it's kind of antipatent these days that you have a template that sets properties, but it doesn't display itself anything. Instead, you make queries that query the same data and maybe some other data and display that, which means that even though I think someone maybe tries to figure that out and make the page update right after you edit, it often doesn't work. So I tried this uh, query checking feature, which was, I assumed would fix that, but the end result was that uh, editing would become very slow, the sub queue would take ages, not keep up the speed, so I had to abandon that option. So in the end, I just wrote maybe 10 lines of JavaScript code, hook on the page, save action, uh, so that it purchases the page and refreshes it afterwards. And uh, it seems the users are happy now. The only downside is that the page will kind of load twice after you save. And uh, with the same wiki, this was not originally in the wiki form, but hosted elsewhere. Uh, I got the task to move it onto this wiki form. And the first time I did this, I took the database dump, added a new code, run the update scripts, and suddenly I have replaced the jobs that were stuck in the job queue, updated random pages with random content. Um, not so nice, so I have to do it again and truncate the job table first. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this was, I don't know, five, six years ago when it got started, so it was using this has default form um, property, which is no longer supported by page forms, and replaced by the magic word, as well as the internal, which is kind of deprecated in favor of sub-objects. And uh, otherwise, I could have like done script this and minimize the read-only time, but this kind of required manual work, updating pages and here and there, so, and have the client test that everything still works, so in the end we had like, I think one week where the old version was read-only and then we just updated to point the new version where they could continue with edits. And yeah, one of the good sides of Wikifarm is that you can keep all the wikis up to date as long as you do it. <laughs> um, given there are lots of wikis with lots of customizations, it's kind of not so nice that you have to test all of them. And every time I do this uh, for the next two months, I will get random emails, hey, this is broken, it's fixing. And uh, it would be nice if there would be tests and definitions of all the features that should be working, but in practice, that's not the case. Um, but yeah, so far there has been incentive to upgrade uh, the wikis to get performance fixes, new features, or big bug fixes for things that were not working, so it has been happening. And yeah, one of the final challenges at times where finding compatible versions of core, wiki-based semantic video wiki, they share some common composer dependencies, those have to be compatible, and the wiki base has to be compatible with core, and you know, they don't do like releases in the sense that this version supports video wiki core, this and that, rather than both that developed to be compatible with this other at that time. And yeah, this kind of was annoying because it doesn't always fail with the clear error message, but there might be things like side links is not appearing in the wiki base side. And there just isn't any clear indication of why. So after hours and hours of debugging the code, okay, this version is not compatible with MediaWiki. Let's find another one. Um, yeah, as a summary, I learned a lot of things, I reported lots of bugs, many of them fixed, and I hope the wiki form I created 
is sustainable even without me. The future will tell. And yeah, Bonisa, nice. So, any questions? <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm just wondering if your Ansible scripts are, are um, published anywhere, like your GitHub repository? Yeah. So there was linked to the presentation earlier in the presentation notes section. There are links to various scripts I mentioned, including the Ansible ones. Great. When, so when you're doing the original import, um, you're basically going from a CSV file and trying to create wiki pages from that in, directly into a media wiki, or is it, was it into wiki base? Uh, in case of semantic, wiki, semantic media wiki projects, I'm just creating the, uh, kind of like creating the wiki pages, but putting them into files. In case of Wikibase, I just uh, create kind of complex JSON structure that then I have code that creates the kind of Wikibase kind of properties and entities in a nice way and saves that. So I'm not creating those pages directly in that sense that I would just import the code, but go through the APIs. Okay, great. How, how often do you, do you, are you basically done with the imports? Or how often are you going to be doing those imports? Yeah, like I said, the scripts can only import from scratch because they check the dependencies between things. And if I would need to do new mass imports, I don't have the code that would check what's already in the wiki and make the links. Like if there's a common author, I would have to check what's the idea of that one. So I can't do those imports anymore. <laughs> okay, great, thanks. Um, so, uh, uh, understanding that you use CentOS for your operating system, is that uh, what I saw up there? For this wiki form, yes. So, I'm just curious why you choose that. So, like for us, a lot of, you know, government and large organizations have it mandated that that's what, what they have to use, um, but it kind of causes somewhat of an uphill struggle compared to using Debian or something that the Wikimedia Foundation is basing all their stuff upon. So what's your reason for, for going that route? Um, well, the simple reason is that it wasn't my decision. So the other organization that's responsible for the servers, they, they get to decide what operating system they can maintain and uh, CentOS 7 was their choice. But like I mentioned before, there were lots of different organizations I had to collaborate with and kind of navigate in a way that everything gets done. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to take a super quick 